What's up, Tutorinos? Brando back here once again, finally, to finish up Metal Gear Solid. Uh, it's been a little while. Work has been hectic. Uh, long days, all that kind of stuff, right? And then, of course, what's up, Tutorinos? Brando back here once again, finally, to finish up Metal Gear Solid. So, uh, as I left my volume on on my uh, to make sure I was still, still streaming, and I heard myself talking to myself, so that's why I stopped. Anyway, yeah, life's been, you know, long days working. It's been hot, so this room gets hot. Today it's been so cool. Today also happens to be my birthday, and I'm finally getting on here to finish MGS. I'm going to finish this last part. We just beat Sniper Wolf. We're about ready to change discs, go on to disc two. And uh, hopefully I won't die too many more times. I used to be bossed at this game, man. And now this game has been bossing me. That's what happens when you come back to a game after all these years. Okay, that's the way we need to go. Okay, we got some cameras in there. What's over here? No, okay, well, okay, won't tell me what it is. I'm gonna try and get my mic set up here where you guys can hear me if I talk. Alright, I need to use that chaff. Nikita missiles! I don't really utilize Nikita missiles too often in this game. Alright, alright, alright. So that's the truck. More cameras, rations. Cardboard box C. Rations. All the rations. All right. So uh, cardboard box C brings you back here. So you can utilize this truck to go to the back, all the way back to the heliport, beginning of the game. Or you can go to the nuclear warhead just, you know, storage building, which, you know, you have that little uh, floor with some ammo and stuff. So if you want to go around and try and stock up on stuff if you need it, I think we are good to go. Pal key, we got cold medicine, rations. Does anybody really ever use a Stinger missile for anything? Like, like for real. Like, I, I don't really know if I, other than like the spot where you need to like destroy the floor. I mean, I, I guess, I guess people could use it for Vulcan Raven. But I've never really done that. I, I, I've always used mines for Vulcan Raven. What do I got here? No smoke. Look at all these cameras. Look at that. Chaff grenades. Going a little overkill on these cameras. Always got to make sure. Oh, it was right there. ESG one, ESG one. So far. Oh. Good little area to stock up on some weapons you might actually be using in the game. Again, leery about mines. And that's why. Wow. How in the heck did I get all the way in there and have none of them go off? Or like not, I, I must have just, just right, you know, crawling past. 
went right we went right by him as soon as I stood up. I was in line for both of them. Alright. Level seven door. Regular surveillance camera. Oh, what's this? Soak up bullets. Run. Got the steps. Time for disc two. All right, since I'm on the PS3, switch discs. Disc two. Are you sure? Now checking. Spared. All right. Split second, I thought I was gonna run right into the lava.
made it through that without being hurt. Carry on to go further down. That just happened to come up right when we were ready for it. Way down to the next boss fight. And so much more exposition. Of course, it's like no secret. We're fighting. I've got something to tell you about Naomi Hunter. What about her? Is this conversation secure? Don't worry, the monitor's off. Okay, what's up? I was in the FBI too, you know. I didn't know that. What's your point? Dr. Hunter's story about her background, about her grandfather being an assistant secretary to Hoover in the FBI. Yeah. And then going undercover to investigate the Mafia in New York. Yeah, what about it? It was all a big lie. What did you say? It was really bothering me. Why would she lie about it? She lied? She might be a spy. Ridiculous. Come on, even a high school student could see past it. The head of the FBI at that time, Edgar Hoover, he was a well-known racist. Didn't Naomi say that her father was Japanese? Yeah. 
Well, back then, there wasn't a single Asian investigator. Also, in the 1950s, the undercover mafia sting operations hadn't even started yet. They first started in 1960, in Chicago, not New York. But you better check it out. The chief and the president mysteriously dying, and that ninja? Too many strange things are happening. Are you saying that Naomi might be behind it? I don't know. Either that, or she's working with the terrorists. Could it be? If I find out anything, I'll call. In the meantime, be careful. I realized I had my desktop audio on an OBS. Hopefully that wasn't an issue for anybody watching. I just looked down and saw it was on. Check them all my other levels now. I got paranoid. All right. Sometimes they even attack wounded foxes. You were the one in the M1 tank? Must have been a tight fit for a big boy like you. <laughs> but that was no true battle. The Ravens and I were testing to see what kind of man you were. The judgment is decided. The Ravens say you are a true warrior. Am I hallucinating? Move. The raven has put the mark of death upon you. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Ah, your ancestors too were raised on the barren plains of Mongolia. Inuit and Japanese are cousins to each other. We share many ancestors, you and I. I don't have any crows in my family tree. <laughs> you jest, but indeed ravens and snakes are not the best of friends. Nevertheless, you will make a worthy adversary. You live in Alaska too. You know of the world Eskimo Indian Olympics? Yeah, I know it. Must be a real threat in the muck duck eating contest. Yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. It is called the Ear Pull. It is an event where two opponents pull each other's ears while enduring the harsh cold. It tests spiritual as well as physical strength. You want to pull each other's ears? The form is different, but the spirit is the same. Rejoice, Snake! Ours will be a glorious battle. This isn't glorious, it's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. Well, we'll see if there's iron in your words.
Not too shabby. Just as the boss said, it is my existence which is no longer needed in this world. But my body will not remain in this place. My spirit and my flesh will become one with the ravens. In that way, I will return to Mother Earth who bore me. Snake! I will be watching you! Understand? I'm watching you. Snake, take this security card. It will open that door. Why? You are a snake which was not created by nature. You and the boss. You are from another world. A world that I do not wish to know. Go and do battle with him. I will be watching from above. First, I'll give you a hint. The man who you saw die before your eyes. What is it? That was not the Dharma Chief. It was Decoy Octopus, a member of Fox dun, Hound. Dun, dun. He was a master of disguise. He copied his subjects down to the blood. So he drained the Chief's blood and took it into himself. But he wasn't able to deceive the Angel of Death. The Angel of Death? But why go to so much trouble? Why impersonate the Chief? <laughs> That is the end of my hint. You must solve the rest of the riddle yourself. Snake, in the natural world, there's no such thing as boundless slaughter. There is always an end to it. But you are different. What are you trying to say? The path you walk on has no end. Each step you take is paved with the corpses of your enemies. Their souls will haunt you forever. You shall have no peace. Hear me, Snake. My spirit will be watching you. Snake, it's me. Master. It's about Naomi. Turn your monitor off. What about Naomi? Damn. Colonel, is Naomi there? No, she's away. She's taking a short nap. Hmm. So what is this about Naomi? Okay, maybe we'd better let the Colonel hear this too. Yeah, go on, Master. Well, basically, Dr. Naomi Hunter is not Dr. Naomi Hunter at all. What? I thought her story of her background sounded kind of fishy, so I checked it out. And? There is an actual Dr. Naomi Hunter, or I should say, there was one. But she's not the woman we know. The real Naomi Hunter disappeared somewhere in the Middle East. Our Naomi must have somehow obtained her identification papers. So then who is she really? She must be some kind of... spy. A spy? <laughs> yes. Maybe she's been sent to sabotage Yeah, I made that myself operation. in uh, Photoshop. Are you saying stacks? she's with the terrorists? Yeah. I don't want to believe it either. Thing. But she is working for Foxhound. So Welcome you think stream, she had a part in the uprising? Or she could be working with some different group altogether. Different group? It couldn't be. Place her under arrest. What? She's betrayed us. 
She needs to be arrested and interrogated to find out who she's with. If she's one of their spies, then we're in big trouble. What do you mean? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Have you let her in on some kind of vital secret or something? Does this have anything to do with the mysterious deaths of the DARPA chief and the arms tech president? I... I have no idea. Anyway, we cannot allow her to participate any further in this mission. Wait, wait a minute. Without her, we can't complete this mission. I knew it. You're hiding something. Give me some time. I'll try to get it out of her. Hurry, then. We've got to figure out who she is and what she's doing here. I understand. Snake, give me some time. I don't have any time left for you. Burn right here. So as I said, uh, maybe in another part, you know, this was one of the first games that I played back when I was a kid. That when I got to a certain point, like I was playing it late at night or whatever, I could not put it down. That was it. The whole realization that you know you're being lied to. And of course, you've been seeing it as the game has been going on, right? But then now Master's starting to figure it out and all that kind of stuff. And he's kind of leading you on, and you're like, oh, what the heck is going on here? Look at all those cameras. Overkill. What's over here? A lot of cameras. That's the stinger missile. Ah, part. Cameras. That's awesome, Stax. Um, I've been streaming this uh, probably for a few weeks, intermittently, off and on, you know. Uh, I'm not a full-time streamer by anything. I got a full-time job, and yeah, I, we do a podcast here on the channel. But I've been trying to play some games, and I love Metal Gear, and I'm going to try and do the whole series, or at least the main, numbered ser you know, main numbers in the series. But... This game is just straight up nostalgia for me. I'm trying to get back into this and be good at it again is more of a challenge than I thought it was going to be, really. Oh, here we go again. Oh. Hey, what's up, dude? Snake, it's me. What's wrong? Did you find a good place to hide? Yeah thanks to the stealth gear. It looks like they've finished getting Metal Gear ready. How do you know that? I overheard them talking. Where are you now? Right in front of Metal Gear, but it's strange. What is? There's nobody here. No guards, nobody patrolling. Nobody it's too empty. quiet. Maybe because happy, they're all uh, ready. happy future birthday. There's they said they even the input Today's the actually codes. my 32nd birthday today. What we today. can do is use the override system that President Baker told you about. But I've only got one of the three keys. And besides that, like Ocelot said, there's some trick to using the keys. Leave it to me. You got some kind of plan? Well, I'm in the computer room right now. I'm trying to access Baker's private files. Baker's files? Don't you need a password? Of course, but there are ways. Are you a hacker? Sorry, pal. Yep. Thanks for, thanks for the heads up, though. Pretty well. Does it look like you can get in? I don't know yet. I'll give it a try. I'm counting on you. It also just be maybe because I'm away from the mic a little bit, but oh, thanks, uh, thanks for the happy B day. Um, we use the mics and everything for the podcast, and I gotta edit stuff. Um, I gotta change settings whenever I stream games or stream the podcast. So sometimes um, things are a little off. I, yeah, action button.
Snake, it's me again. How's it going? Uh, not bad. I just Does this sound better? Third security level. He was a pretty careful guy. Do you think you'll break in soon? I never met a system I couldn't bust into. Okay, keep trying. That was like a totally pointless call. Over this way. Thanks, man. I, pre I, pre I appreciate the heads up. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm learning more that I use the OBS software and everything. That everything sounds much differently in here than it does going out. We've been having issues with the podcast sound where it's like I'm much too quiet or my co-host is much too quiet or he's too loud and while it sounds good up here and it's, it's almost like we almost have to do a test every single time record a snippet listen to it and then make adjustments but then like you always forget like you're just so ready to get started snake i did it you got past security bingo great so what do you got? I accessed the confidential Metal Gear file. So what about the PAL override system that Baker talked about? I haven't found it yet. <laughs> That's what I need to know. But Snake, I found something else. What? The secret behind the new nuclear weapon. Just as I thought, the nuclear warhead is designed to be fired from the railgun like a projectile. It doesn't use fuel, so it isn't considered a missile. That way it can get around all sorts of international treaties. Pretty sneaky. Yes, but effective. And that's not even the scariest thing about this weapon. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. It's a stealth weapon. You mean it won't show up on radar? Yeah. The truth is, they've been working on a stealth missile since the late 70s. Why weren't they able to develop one until now? Because of the missile rocket propulsion system. It would be picked up by enemy satellites. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. But unlike a missile, the railgun doesn't burn any propellant, so it can't be detected by any current ballistic missile detection systems. An invisible nuclear warhead. Totally impossible to intercept. And on top of that, it's got a surface-piercing warhead designed to penetrate hardened underground bases. Yeah, we learned that lesson in the Gulf War. This thing could mean the end of the world. It's the ultimate weapon. And from a political point of view, it avoids the problem of nuclear reduction and nuclear inspections. Colonel, is this true? Are you listening? I'm listening. If word of this got out, it could delay the signing of the START III treaty and cause a huge international incident. Yeah, it would be nasty. The United States would be denounced by the UN. It oh, that's cool, dude. The president uh... down. Did you know this, Colonel? I'll definitely, I definitely have to check I'm you out, sorry. man, start, and start watching some of your streams Colonel. when you start. I won't make any excuses. Snake, listen to me. This new nuclear weapon, it's never actually been tested, only simulated. In VR. You know, they ran a computer model? Yeah, that's why they were conducting this exercise. They needed to get actual experimental data to back up the simulation. What were the results of the exercise? It looks like it went better than they hoped for, but I can't find the data anywhere on this network. You'd think the data as important as that would be carefully recorded. It was. President Baker gave me an optical disk with all of the test data. What? Do you still have it? No. Ocelot took it from me. Damn. The terrorists have replaced the dummy warhead with a real warhead. Once they input the detonation codes, they should be ready to launch. So you think they can do it? Well, the dummy warhead was designed to be identical to the real thing, so I think so. Did you find out how to override it yet? Not yet. It must be in a separate file. Right now I'm looking through all of Baker's personal files. We're counting on you. Oh, that's okay. We'll just have that entire conversation while standing on Metal Gear's head. Crap. 
No, you didn't. P-Box. What's that? I can go. I'm up here. I gotta look him on his head. Get another Otacon call. Did you find it? No. I haven't found out about the override system yet, but I found Baker's ulterior motive. He's just looking to get rich, isn't he? Well, that's part of it. Armstech is in much worse financial trouble than I thought. I know they lost their bid to make the next generation fighter jet. That plus the reduction in SDI spending. It looks like there was even some talk of a hostile takeover. Everything was riding on this project, I guess. It looks like we were paying a lot of bribe money to the DARPA chief. Bribe money, huh? Yeah, and Baker was a big proponent of the nuclear deterrent theory. I see. So anyway, what about the override? Just give me a little bit longer. Okay, I've entered the PAL codes and disengaged the safety device. We can launch. Thanks for tuning in, Stax. I'll be sure to check out your uh, uh, your stream, it looks dude. Like we'll have to show them that we mean business. Should I set it for Chernatin, Russia? No, there's been a change. The new target is Lopnor, China. Why, boss? I'm sure neither you nor Mr. Golukovich would really like to see a nuclear bomb. Remember drop that your name, motherland, right? Liquid. But why? There's nothing there. Wrong. It's a nuclear test site. A nuclear test site? If we nuke a major population center, the game's over. But a nuclear explosion at a test site can still be concealed from the public. Meanwhile, Washington will be worried about the retaliatory strike from China. That'll probably mean top secret talks between both countries' leaders. Of course. And in the process, the President will be forced to divulge the existence of a new and highly destabilizing nuclear weapon to the Chinese. What do you think that will do to the U.S.'s reputation? Or the President's? And with the CTBT, that means that China and India... I see... Yes. When the other countries hear about this new weapon, they'll all want to contact us. Washington won't be very happy when we start selling their own system to the highest bidders. Yes. President will break. He will give in to our demands. Big Boss's DNA and one billion dollars. Billion dollars? That money will be used to cure our genome soldiers as well. I'm also including the Fox Dye vaccine in our demands. Fox Dye. It killed Octopus and the Arms Tech President. So it's true that it affects older people first. Mantis might not have been affected because he wore a mask. Wolf wasn't infected either. Perhaps due to those tranquilizers she always took. Something to do with the adrenaline level in the blood. Or maybe it's just because this fox dye was still experimental and they haven't worked out all the bugs yet. In any case, have you heard from your friend, Colonel Sergei Golukovich, at the Spetsnaz? He still has doubts about the ability of Metal Gear. He said we can talk after Metal Gear's test launch is successful. 
Hmm, he's a very prudent man. There's nothing to worry about. The Colonel wants Metal Gear and a new nuclear weapon so bad he can taste it. If Russia wants to regain its position as a military superpower, they need to reinforce their nuclear arsenal. They need a nuclear weapon that can't be intercepted. Metal Gear will allow them to gain first strike capability over the rest of the world. Their regular army is in shambles, and they think they can restore their country's military power with nuclear weapons? Galukovic, he's no warrior. He's a politician. But he's the one who gave us the hind and most of our other heavy firepower. He's got over a thousand soldiers under his command. If we join forces, we could put up quite a resistance here. Since Mantis died, the genome soldier's brainwashing has started to wear off. I'm worried about the men's morale. An alliance with the Russians would boost that as well. What are you saying? We're not going anywhere. We're going to dig in here. We could still escape. We've got the most powerful weapon ever made, and we're about to ally with Galukovich's forces. Are you going to fight the whole world? <laughs> What's wrong with that? We can launch a nuclear warhead at any target on this planet. A nuclear warhead invisible to radar. And on top of that, this base is full of spare nuclear warheads. Once we get the DNA and the money, the world will be ours. What about your promise to Colonel Golukovich? I have no interest in the revival of Mother Russia. You're not thinking of reviving Big Boss's dream. From today, call this place Outer Heaven. Don't, 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 don't. Big Boss's dream. But boss, you're not worried about the PAL being overridden. If the code is in it again, it'll be deactivated. No need to worry. The DARPA chief and the arms tech president are both dead. Does Snake know how the override system works? You interrogated him, don't you know? He didn't have any keys on him. Good. Then no one can stop Metal Gear now. By the way, what should we do with that woman? Want me to kill her? Let her live. She's Campbell's niece, and Snake cares for her. We'll keep her as our ace in the hole. Beryl, she's alive. Snake, I found Baker's top secret files. Great job. How's it going there? They've finished inputting the PAL codes. So how do we deactivate them? Okay. You see, the override system that the President was talking about, it can also be used to input the detonation codes. You see, if you insert the keys when the warhead is active, you deactivate it. And if you insert them when it's inactive, it becomes activated. And you can only use the keys once. Only once, huh? Yeah. You better get started. We don't have much time. But it takes three keys, right? I've only got one of them. Hold on a minute. You see, that's the trick. You already have all three keys. What are you talking about? The card key is made of a shape memory alloy. Shape memory alloy? Yes. It's a material that changes shape at different temperatures. The key is made out of it. This card key? Yeah. The card key changes shape at different temperatures. So this key is actually three keys in one. Clever. Can you see the input terminals in the center of the control room? I see them. Those three laptop terminals are for the emergency input. There should be a symbol on each screen. Each symbol corresponds to a different key. Input the keys in order from left to right. The left one's for the room temperature key. See the symbol? Next to that goes the low temperature key. The one on the right is the high temperature key. Okay, I got it. First, I change the shape of the card, and then I input them in order, right? That's right. All you do is insert the card keys. After you insert the key into the module, a hard disk reads the information contained on it. Once you've finished with all three terminals, the code input process is complete. But here's the thing. You can only use the key three times. It's an emergency system. It's only meant to be used once. The world is riding on that key, Snake. Who's that? Damn! Dun dun dun! The key fell in the drainage ditch. Snake! This is bulletproof glass. 
There's no way in. I'll enjoy watching you die. <laughs> Snake, you've got to get that key. So now we gotta get the key back. So, unfortunately, it's not just a matter of going and picking up the freaking key. A mouse ate it. Now there's a way we can track it though, because we got detector I've actually found it that quickly ever in this version of the game. I want to say, like, they make a damn mouse eat it, and then you gotta chase the damn thing all like all the way around. I'm gonna go all the way back up there. Avoid detection from that one guard. And get back in that room and enter uh, these keys.
So now we gotta go back and hang out in the area where we fought uh, Vulcan Raven. I want to say that, like, if you go into that permafrost room where you fought uh, Raven, that you can actually have your rations freeze on you too, and you have to hold, you have to actually uh, like equip them into your little box, and that's holding them close to yourself, and that will enable them to thaw out. Keep getting paranoid like they're gonna start adding more guards in. I can make it all the way across there. Yeah. Alright. I was able to make it across. But I didn't need any more rations. For once. Dasha has to say. Anything interesting? That's a chaff grenade. It's oh, a special a grenade. grenade that disperses thin, narrow metallic strips of various lengths and frequency responses. It can confuse electronic equipment. It will be useful against machines which depend upon electronic sensors. Naturally, for it to be effective, you must use it before you are attacked. If you are expecting an attack, Spread the chaff beforehand. Ah, I didn't mean to call you again. There is a big difference between conventional weapons and weapons of mass destruction. Conventional weapons are intended for use against military targets. But nuclear weapons are used against non-combatants. Nukes are designed to kill tens of thousands of innocent civilians in a flash. That is why nuclear weapons are so evil. Indeed. Okay. What's up, Master? Now freeze that key. Get somewhere cold. Okay. That was pretty quick. Campbell! You've got to lower that card key's temperature. Find someplace cold. Attica? Next, you've got to cool the card key. Where should I do that? This is Alaska. Go outside. It's cold everywhere. But you're close to the warehouse where you fought Raven, right? That place is right in the middle of the permafrost layer, and there's no heater either. That key is actually an IC card. Its connector pins and main body are made of a shape memory alloy. It's designed so that unless it's been changed to the correct shape, it won't be recognized by the PAL code input terminal in the control room and the detonation code won't be entered. Well, they sure uh, gobbled up the rest of him, didn't they?
Well, I guess we just gotta wait. Yeah, I really, um... I, re I really remember... Being like, I'm near the end of the game. I just reached Metal Gear. Uh, and then, uh, like, like, this whole little... Like, they throw that little thing at you with the whole Naomi thing. And then they're like... Uh, they get you, like, you're mind-boggled by that. Now they're like, okay, now go do this stuff and you gotta stop everything. So I'm like, as a kid, I'm like, I can't go sleep. I gotta beat the game. I'm so close. I wonder what... I wonder what's going on. There we go. Okay. So now it's changed. We gotta hurry back before it gets back to room 10. unintuitive like way to get across they actually changed it in the uh, GameCube remake where you don't have to climb over his damn head and you can also aim in first person mode Next comes pal number three. Warm the key. Now I gotta go back to that blast furnace. Probably more, uh, more in depth, we gotta go to that little steam room in the blast furnace. That'll heat it up. Yeah, in the GameCube remake, they added more stairs and less ladders. Even though, even even though the GameCube remake is in a lot of ways inferior to this version, 
there are things that I really dig about it. And I really wish it was available. I really wish that it would get a remaster very much in akin to when they did all the other ones, uh, either on the PS3 or, you know, how they, you know, the other big GameCube game or games, uh, you know, plural, the Resident Evil and Resident Evil Zero. I, I, I really feel like, you know, Twin Snakes, it could use uh, an HD. Oh, here, okay, here we got some guys. Move the big gun too. But I really do. I really wish that version would get a release. I mean, MGS4, when they do flashbacks for the. When you go to Shadow of Moses and MGS4, spoiler alert, they use the voice samples from Twin Snakes, where you hear Naomi and Mei Ling without their accents and stuff like that. So, if that's the canonized uh, version for that, even though, even though, you know, the cutscenes are over the top, he bounces off a missile, and flipping around with the ninja, I get that. It's ridiculous. Metal Gear is ridiculous, though. I mean, there's there's a lot in there that doesn't bother me. So here we got more ex snake. Yep. It's about Naomi Bring back Hunter. The Naomi and thing right here. To the colonel. He's looking into it. Turn your monitor off. Okay, it's off. No one else can hear us. Go ahead. Sorry, but I didn't want the colonel to hear. Okay, so what's up? I've got a good friend in the Pentagon. Yeah. He's the one who told me about it. It looks like the DIA recently developed a new type of assassination weapon. An assassination weapon? Snake, have you ever heard of something called Fox Dye? No. Fox Dye. Liquid and the others were talking about it. Yeah. It's some kind of virus that, that targets specific people. I don't know all the details, but... What are you trying to say? It's too similar. What is? The cause of death. Didn't the arms tech president and the DARPA chief, I mean, decoy octopus, die of something that looked like a heart attack? Yeah. Well, apparently, Fox Die kills its victims by simulating a heart attack. No. You're telling me that Naomi was behind it? Snake, try to remember. Did Naomi give you some kind of injection? The nanomachines. She was in the best position to have done it, but I don't know what her motive was. See, this Does is pulling me along know? even more I'm back sure. then. My but he still hasn't questioned her. Okay, I'll ask him myself. Colonel, what's new with the Naomi situation? I just placed Naomi under arrest. Arrest? She was sending coded messages towards the Alaskan base. I didn't want to believe it. But she must be working with the terrorists. Are you sure? I'm afraid so. She's being interrogated now. What kind of interrogation? Well, I'd like to avoid the rough stuff, but we don't even have any sodium pentothal here. Call me if you find out anything. So it's true, isn't it? Naomi, I can't believe it. That means the Fox Dye vaccine must be around somewhere. Listen, I've got bigger things to worry about. But Snake, you might be infected too, you know. All I can do is leave it up to the colonel. Again, man, it was, you know, you're going through doing all this stuff. They lay it on you right before you get all that stuff about learning how to do all this stuff. In the middle here, right when you're doing their little quest, boom. Naomi isn't what she thought she was. If you were paying attention too, you probably could have figured... <laughs> Sometimes they put mines there. Did 
Did that key change? No, it's still frozen. Body armor. Reduces damage upon impact. Pull for fast. Man, I can't wait to get to two where I can have this stuff itemized. I'll have to go through the whole damn thing. Hang out here for a while. I'll admit, the first time I played the game, I really didn't even clue in the little twist that's gonna hit us. Uh, didn't even, you know, I didn't even put two and two together. Even though it's kind of obvious, especially if you have a, a good year and whatnot. Gosh darn flyer flying around here. And that was fast. See? Now, we bolt out of here. minds. Just long elevator rides. Nowhere near as long as Mass Effect's one's elevator rides. But darn near. I mean, look how fast we're going. Or lack of speed. This time. No, no. Snake, can you hear me? It's Naomi. Naomi? What the hell? Campbell and the others are busy right now. I'm on a different codec. Naomi, is what the Colonel says true? Yes, but not everything I said was a lie. Who are you? I don't know myself. I don't know my real name or even what my parents looked like. I bought all my identification. But my reason for getting into genetics was true. Because you want to know yourself, right? That's right. I want to know where I came from. My, my age, my race, anything. Naomi. I, I was found in Rhodesia sometime in the 80s. A dirty little orphan. Rhodesia? What's now known as Zimbabwe? Yes. 
Rhodesia was owned by England until 1965, and there were lots of Indian laborers around. That's probably where I got my skin color from, but I'm not even sure about that. Naomi, you're too worried about the past. Isn't it enough to understand who you are now? Understand who I am now? Why should I? No one else tries to understand me. I was alone for so long, until I met my big brother, and him. And your big brother? Yes. Frank Yeager. Dun, dun, what? Dun, 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 dun. He was a young soldier, when he picked me up near the Zambezi River. I was That's half not dead the twist I was talking about. And he shared his rations with me. Yes. Frank Yeager. The man who you destroyed was my brother and my only family. No. Gray Fox? We survived that hell together, Frank and I. He protected me. He's my one connection. The only connection I have to my past. And he brought you back to America? No. I was in Mozambique when he came. Who was he? You mean Big Boss? Yes. He brought us to this land of freedom. This America. And then he and my brother went back to Africa to continue the war. And that's when it happened. You killed my benefactor and sent my brother home a cripple. I vowed revenge and joined Foxhound. I knew it was my best chance to meet you and I prayed for the day that I would. So, were your prayers answered? Yes. I waited two long years. To kill me? Is that all you cared about? Yes. That's right. Two years. You were all I thought about for two long years. Like some kind of twisted obsession. Do you still hate me? Not exactly. I was partly wrong about you. What about Liquid and the others? <laughs> I'll have my revenge on them, too. Dun, dun, dun. Naomi, you didn't kill that doctor, too, did you? The one that used Gray Fox for his genome experiments? Dr. Clark? No. That was my brother. Afterwards, I covered it up and helped him hide out. So that ninja... I mean, Gray Fox... He's come here to kill me? I don't think so. I think he just came here to fight you. I wasn't sure before, but now I think I understand. A final battle with you. That's all he lives for. I'm sure of it. Fox, no. Naomi, tell me something. About Fox Dye? Fox Dye is a type of retrovirus that targets and kills only specific people. First, it infects the macrophages in the victim's body. Fox dye contains smart enzymes created through protein engineering. They're programmed to respond to specific genetic patterns in the cells. Those enzymes recognize the target's DNA? Right. They respond by becoming active and using the macrophages they begin creating TNF Epsilon. Huh? <laughs> it's a type of cytokine, right? a peptide which causes cells to die. The TNF Epsilon is carried along the bloodstream to the heart, where they attach to the TNF receptors in the heart cells. And then, they cause a heart attack? The heart cells suffer a shock and undergo an extreme apoptosis. Then, the victim dies. Apoptosis? You mean the heart cells commit suicide? Naomi. What? You must have programmed that thing to kill me too, right? Do I still have time? Naomi, I don't blame you for wanting me dead, but I can't go yet. I still have a job to do. Listen, Snake. I'm not the one who made the decision to use Fox Dye. Huh? You weren't? No. You were injected with Fox Dye as a part of this operation. I just wanted to let you know that. No, that's not the whole truth. Huh? The real thing I wanted to tell you was... Snake, I... I... Hey, what are you doing? <gasps> what are you doing? <gasps> Snake! 
Naomi. Random New Yorker on the sub. Snake, I can't allow Naomi to make any more unauthorized transmissions. Ah, oh, come what? on, man. Naomi's been removed from this operation. What happened to Naomi? What did she mean when she said that Fox Die was a part of this operation? Colonel, let me talk to her. I won't. She's under arrest. Colonel, you double-crossed me. Snake, there's no time for that. Right now, your job is to stop Metal Gear. Okay, Snake? You'll... you'll stop it, right? Book it, book it, book it. Gotta go, gotta go. Alright. Put it back on now. So calm. Ladders, ladders, so many ladders. Come on. Last key entered. Pal code number three confirmed. Pal code entry complete. Detonation code activated. activated. No. Why? Ready for launch. I deactivated it. Thank you, Snake. Now the detonation code Twist. is completed. Nothing can stop Metal Gear now. Master, what's going on? You found the key, and even activated the warhead for us, too. I really must express my gratitude. Sorry to have involved you in that silly shape memory alloy business. What are you talking about? We weren't able to learn the DARPA chief's code. Even with Mantis' psychic powers, he couldn't read his mind. Then Ocelot accidentally killed him during the interrogation. In other words, we weren't able to launch the nuclear device, and we were all getting a little worried. Without the threat of a nuclear strike, our demands would never be met. What do you mean? Without the detonation codes, we had to find some other way. That's when we decided you might prove useful, Snake. What? First, I thought we might get the information from you, Snake. So I had Decoy Octopus disguise himself as the DARPA chief. Unfortunately, Octopus didn't survive the, the encounter. 
thanks to Fox Die. You mean you had this plan from the beginning, just to get me to input the detonation code? Huh? <laughs> you didn't think you made it this far by yourself, did you? Who the hell are you? In any case, the launch preparations are complete. Once the world glimpses the power of this weapon, the White House will have no choice but to surrender the Fox Dye vaccine to me. Their ace in the hole is useless now. Ace in the hole? The Pentagon's plan to use you was already successful in the torture room. <laughs> Snake, you're the only one who doesn't know. Ah, oh, poor fool. Who are you anyway? I'll tell you everything you want to know. If you come where I am, that is. Where are you? Very close by. Snake, that's not Master Miller. Campbell, you're too late. Boom. Master Miller's body was just discovered at his home. He's been dead for at least three days. I didn't know because my codec link with Master was cut off. But Mei Ling said his transmission signal was coming from inside the base. So who is it? Snake, you've been talking to me, dear brother. Glasses off. Hair down. Liquid, how the... You've served your purpose. You may die now. Gas mask. So, really quick. I really want to take a moment. Uh, I really, I really want to take a moment to talk about the player misdirection uh, that was done there with them giving you a cutscene and the villains, Ocelot and Liquid, openly lying, knowing that Snake is there, but also lying to you, the player. This isn't the first or by far the last time that Kojima will do something like this. In fact, he kind of makes it a staple uh, going forward. I Gosh darn fly, I tell you what. But, essentially what they did, now I hear music. Maybe it was just a car going by. I do have the window open. But, basically what they did is that, you know, uh, and they, this, the, you know, Metal Gear, a lot of times, breaks that fourth wall. You know, we've already seen it in this game with the whole Psycho Mantis thing. And, and, you know, and that kind of stuff with the whole, you know, involving you outside of the game and putting Meryl's codec uh, number, them not telling you, but saying it's on back of the, of, of the CD case, right? This, in a way, is another level of that. They don't come out right and say it, but they, they basically make you activate it while having, basically, they were, they were, like, they were stuck. They had no way to activate this thing. They didn't have the key, which you had. And they figured they would just let you do it because you're, and they'll make you think that you're deactivating it. Meanwhile, you're 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 just fulfilling their plans. Not that exact example is going to be done later, but player misdirection is something that Kojima does a lot, and I just wanted to 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 really really applaud that because it Kojima gets what it is, you know, in the in the art form that is a video game. When, when when you're telling a a visual story and and the whole you know curves and twists and all that kind of stuff that that's one thing, but with a game you have the you have the capability of taking it to the next level, beyond the fourth wall where you're twisting the player, not just twisting the story but twisting them into it, and then you know, you know basically making it impact on a whole other level. Whether it's like, you know, this whole thing, like, oh my gosh, I've been lied to since the beginning, not only by Campbell, but also by Master and the fact that it was really liquid the whole time. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there's stuff like that that happens in 2. And then, of course, the whole player misdirection and all that kind of stuff is, is a big part of Snake Eater. So, carrying on. we got to get out of this room. All right. Uh... 
Campbell. Snake, gas! Do something! Snake, call Emmerich. He should be able to break through security. Snake, that's bulletproof glass. You can't break it with an ordinary weapon. Can't you open the security lock here? I'll try. Just hold on for a minute. <laughs> Have that little liquid snake. Did you like my sunglasses? You'd point a weapon at your own brother? Why did you disguise yourself as master? So I could manipulate you more easily. And you performed quite well, I must say. <sighs> Although the boys at the Pentagon are probably saying the same thing. What the hell are you talking about? Following orders blindly with no questions asked, you've lost your warrior's pride and become nothing more than a palm snake. What? Stopping the nuclear launch, rescuing the hostages, it was all just a diversion. A diversion? The Pentagon only needed for you to come into contact with us. That's what killed the arms tech president and decoy octopus. You don't mean... That's right. You were sent here to kill us so they could retrieve Metal Gear undamaged, along with the bodies of the genome soldiers. From the beginning, the Pentagon was just using you as a vector to spread fox dye. Fox die? It can't be. Are you telling me Naomi was working with the Pentagon? They thought she was, but it seems that Dr. Naomi Hunter couldn't be controlled so easily. What? We've got a spy working in the Pentagon. He reported that Dr. Hunter altered Fox Die's program just before the operation, but no one knows how or why. I wonder. Maybe they arrested her so they could find out the answer to that. No doubt. But I had no idea she was motivated by such petty revenge. We still don't know what changes she made to Fox Dye's program. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I've already added the Fox Dye vaccine to my list of White House demands. There's a vaccine? There must be. But that woman is the only one who really knows. Anyway, it might prove to be unnecessary. Why is that? You were successful in coming into contact with all of us, so we must have all been exposed to the virus. It's true that the Armstead President and Decoy Octopus were killed by Fox Dye, but Ocelot, myself, and you, the carrier, were apparently unaffected. A bug in the virus's programming? Hmm. Could be. In any case, if it doesn't kill you, then I'm not worried either. After all, our genetic code is identical. So it's true. You and I are... Yes, twins. But we're not ordinary twins. We're twins linked by cursed genes. Les enfants terribles. You're fine. You got all the old man's dominant genes. I got the flawed recessive gene. Everything was done so that you would be the greatest of his children. The only reason I exist is so they could create you. I was the favorite, huh? That's right. I'm just the leftovers of what they used to make you. Can you understand what it's like to know that you're garbage since the day you were born? But I'm the one father chose. So that's why you're so obsessed with Big Boss. Some warped kind of love. Love? It's hate! He always told me I was inferior, and now I'll have my revenge! <laughs> you should understand me, brother. You killed our father with your own hands! 
You stole my chance for revenge! Now I'll finish the work that father began. I will surpass him. I will destroy him. You're just like Naomi. Well, I'm not like you. Unlike you, I'm proud of the destiny that is encoded into my very genes. Yeah. Snake, your blood will be the first to be spilled by this glorious new weapon. Consider it an honor, a gift from your brother. Now I'll show you the power of the weapon that will lead us in the 21st century. It's moving. Anakon, what do I do? Snake, Rex's armor is impregnable. You can't do any damage with the weapons you've got. Rex uses the latest advances in compound armor. The only way you can pierce it is with a high-performance heat round. So what do I do? Rex's pilot seat operates exactly like a VR system. It's got multiple sensors connected to a high-tech interface used for the controls. It's completely self-enclosed and shut off from the outside environment. He's not using his naked eyes? That's right. So if you could somehow destroy the sensors... Do you see that round plate on Rex's left arm? Yeah, that thing that looks like a shield. That's a ray dome. If you can destroy that thing, it won't be able to use its electronic equipment. So he'll be blinded? Yeah, try to hit that ray dome with a stinger missile. So that will stop it? No. Rex was designed so it can be controlled manually, too. Oh. Great. <laughs> the part that looks like a beak is where the pilot seat is. In an emergency, it'll open up. Rex's armor is perfect. You can't destroy it. You told me that already. But the interior is a different story. I get it. First, I destroy the ray dome. That will force him to open up the pilot seat. Right. If you can shoot a stinger missile into the cockpit, you'll destroy the computer control system. You intentionally designed it with a weak point? It's not a weak point. I like to think of it as a character flaw. People just aren't complete without some type of character flaw, don't you think? I guess so. I owe you one, Otacon. we go check this controller setting again wait no 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 digital analog
I have discovered that this the game automatically reverts it back to digital each and every single time. Stop her. No, I can't. Why? Because I'm the one who killed her parents. I was young then and couldn't bring myself to kill her too. I felt so bad that I decided to take her with me. I raised her like she was my own blood to soothe my guilty conscience. Even now she thinks of me as her brother. Fox. From the outside, we might have seemed like a happy brother and sister, but every time I looked at her, I saw her parents' eyes staring back at me. Tell her for me. Tell her that I was the one who did it. There you are! We're just about out of time. Here's a final present from Deep Throat. I'll stop it from moving! Fox! I can't do it. 
After Zanzibar, I was taken from the battle. Neither truly alive nor truly dead. An undying shadow in a world of light. But soon, soon. I like this, by the way. Finally end. Where you're in this like you are going to do it with a new one. they added in like all these animal noises like that little growl or guttural noise when it after it killed fox and it like roared I won't die as long as you still live. Too bad. It looks like your revolution was a failure. Just because you've destroyed Metal Gear doesn't mean I am done fighting. Fighting? What are you really after? A world where warriors like us are honored as we once were. As we should be. That was Big Boss's fantasy. It was his dying wish. <sighs> when he was young, during the Cold War, the world needed men like us. We were valued then. We were desired. But things... Oh, are different now. With all the liars and hypocrites running the world, war isn't what it used to be. 
We're losing our place in a world that no longer needs us. A world that now spurns our very existence. You should know that as well as I do. After I launch this weapon and get our billion dollars, we'll be able to bring chaos and honor back to this world gone soft. Conflict will breed conflict. New hatreds will arise. Then we'll steadily expand our sphere of influence. But as long as there are people, there will always be war. But the problem is balance. Father knew what type of a balance was best. Is that the only reason? <laughs> Isn't it reason enough for warriors such as us? I don't want that kind of world. Ha! You lie. So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? Why did you come here? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you then. You enjoy all the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? Th that was... <laughs> I watched your face when you did it. It was filled with the joy of battle. You're wrong. There's a killer inside you. You don't have to deny it. We were created to be that way. Created? Les enfants terribles. Les enfants terribles. The Terrible Children. That's what the project was called. It started in the 1970s. Their plan was to artificially create the most powerful soldier possible. The person that they chose as the model was the man known then as the greatest living soldier in the world. Big Boss. But Father was wounded in combat and already in a coma when they brought him in. So they created us from his cells. With a combination of 20th century analog cloning, and the Super Baby Method. Super Baby Method? They fertilized the baby with one of father's cells, and then let it divide into eight clone babies. Then they transferred the clones to someone's uterus, and later intentionally aborted six of the fetuses to encourage strong fetal growth. You and I were originally octuplets. Octuplets? Yes. The other six of our brothers were sacrificed to make us. We were accomplices in murder before the day we were even born. So it was you and I. Two fertilized eggs with exactly the same DNA. But they weren't finished yet. They used me as a guinea pig to create a phenotype in which all of the dominant genes were expressed to create you. I got all of the recessive genes. You took everything from me before I was even born! But... You and I aren't his only children. What? The Genome Soldiers. They too are his progeny, carrying on his genetic legacy. But they're different. They're digital. With the completion of the Human Genome Project, the mysteries of humanity were laid bare. Thanks to Father's DNA, they were able to identify more than 60 soldier genes responsible for everything from strategic thinking to the proverbial killer instinct. Those soldier genes were transplanted into the members of the next generation special forces. That's how they became the genome soldiers. <laughs> That's right. The genome soldiers that you've been killing are our brothers with the same genes as ours. The genome soldiers? That's right. They are our brothers, created artificially through the alignment of nucleotides to mimic our father's genes. They too are the product of numerous sacrifices. Sacrifices? Human experiments! Sacrifices? 1991, the Gulf War. The military secretly injected soldiers with the soldier genes. The Gulf War syndrome that hundreds of thousands of returning soldiers complained about was a side effect of it. Ha! Everyone knows that the Gulf War syndrome was caused by exposure to depleted uranium used in the anti-tank rounds. 
<laughs> that was just a cover story issued by the Pentagon. First they tried to say it was post-traumatic stress disorder, then chemical or biological weapons. The poison gas detection units and the anti-serin injections, they were all just a cover-up of the secret genetic experiments. So then, the so-called Gulf War babies that have been reported by Gulf War veterans are... Yes. They, too, are our brothers and sisters. So the genome soldiers mean that the experiments were a success? Success? Don't be a fool! They're a complete failure! We are on the verge of extinction! What? What? Have you ever heard of the asymmetry theory? Nature tends to favor asymmetry. Those species which have gone extinct all show signs of symmetry. The genome soldiers suffer from the same problem. Signs of symmetry. So do I. As do you. That's right. We are all on the verge of death at the genetic level. We don't know when or what type of disease will occur. That's why we need the old man's genetic information. You want Big Boss's DNA so you can save your family? It's very touching. In nature, family members don't mate with each other, and yet they help each other to survive. Do you know why? It increases the chance that their genes will be passed on to a new generation. Altruism among blood relatives is a response to natural selection. It's called the selfish gene theory. You're telling me that your genes are ordering you to save the genome soldiers? You can't fight your genes. It's fate. All living things are born for the sole purpose of passing on their parents' genes. That's why I'll follow what my genes tell me. And then I'm going to go beyond. In order to break the curse of my heritage. And to do that, first, I will kill you. Look behind you! Meryl! Is she alive? I'm not sure. She was alive a few hours ago. Poor girl kept calling your name. Meryl. Stupid woman. Falling in love with a man who doesn't even have a name. I have a name. No! We have no past, no future, and even if we did, it wouldn't be truly ours. You and I are just copies of our father, Big Boss. Let Meryl go. As soon as we've finished our business, we're almost out of time. You're talking about Fox Die. No. It seems now that the Pentagon knows that Metal Gear is destroyed, they've arrived at a decision. They won't even need a PDA. If you want the details, why don't you ask your precious Colonel Campbell? Colonel, can you hear me? Yes, I'm listening. What is the Pentagon trying to do? Colonel, answer me. The Secretary of Defense has taken over active control of this operation. He's on his way there by AWACS. What for? To bomb the place. What? Not only that. B-2 bombers just lifted off from Galena Air Force Base. They're carrying B-6113 surface-piercing tactical nuclear bombs. What? Metal Gear is destroyed. Tell the Secretary of Defense. The Secretary of Defense heard that Naomi double-crossed us, and he's worried about Fox Die. Now that there's no more danger of a nuclear strike from Metal Gear, he's going to do whatever's necessary to cover up the truth of what really happened here. He's going to drop a nuclear bomb to vaporize all the evidence along with anyone who knows anything. Don't worry, Snake. I'll stop the nuclear strike. How? I may only be a figurehead here, but I'm still officially in command of this mission. If I issue an order to delay the strike, it'll confuse the chain of command and at least buy you some time. It'll give you a chance to escape. But, Colonel, if you do that... It's okay, Snake. The truth is, Foxhound was already the subject of an undercover investigation. Merrill was transferred to this base just before the terrorist attack as a way of manipulating me. Those bastards. I'm sorry. They forced me to cooperate in exchange for her life. You better get out of there, Snake. 
Are you sure? It'll be bad for you. Don't worry. It's the least I can do for you, after all the lies. Colonel. I'm ordering them to cancel Could do the a little bit more. Run. After that, there's no turning back. A lot back. of lies. What? What are you doing? What? Snake! Mei Ling, what happened to the Colonel? I don't believe it. What happened? Snake, the Colonel! Roy Campbell has been relieved of duty. This is the Secretary of Defense, Jim Houseman. Put the Colonel back on. He's been placed under arrest for leaking top secret information and for the crime of high treason. Ridiculous. Yes, he's a ridiculous man. He truly believed that he was in command of this operation. You bastard. There won't be a speck of evidence left. I'm sure the President would want the same thing. The President ordered this? The President is a busy man. I have complete authority here. How do you plan on explaining a nuclear attack on Alaska to the media? Don't worry. We've prepared a convincing cover story. We'll simply say that the terrorists exploded a nuclear device. Smart. You'll be murdering everyone here. The scientists, the genome army, everyone. Donald, the DARPA chief is already dead. So, you didn't mean to kill the DARPA chief after all. He was my friend. And you could care less about what happens to everybody else, huh? Well, if you give me the optic disc, I might consider saving them. What are you talking about? Metal Gear's test data. Donald was supposed to bring it back. I don't have it. I see. Oh, well, that's okay. Shady, 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 man. You two are an embarrassment from the 1970s. Our country's dirty little secret. You can't be allowed to live. Well, the bombs will be dropping soon, and you two have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> There's no way out for us. Let's finish this before the airstrike. You stole everything from me. Only your death can satisfy me. Only your death can return to me what is rightly mine. She'll make a beautiful sacrifice for our final battle. Do you see this? It will be the time limit for our final battle. This nuclear module is set to detonate at the precise moment of her death. If you win, you might still be able to save her. You could enjoy one brief moment of love before the end. If you cross this line, you fall. At this height, it will kill even you. Have at you, Snake! What? 
almost must have not really uh, focused in, during all those uh, CQC training classes. at it. That's a very light tone for Snake. Meryl. Meryl? I gotta turn my metal voice back on. Snake, is that you? Snake, oh, you're alive. Thank God. Meryl. Meryl, are you okay? Are you okay? Is that all you can say? Meryl. It must have been terrible. Oh, it wasn't that bad. I didn't give in to the torture. Torture? Torture? And things even worse than that. Whoa. I was fighting too. Just like you. Yeah, like what You're kind of crap woman. did they do to her? You fighting know? them made me feel closer to you. I felt like you were there with me. It gave me the strength to go on. But I was scared. I'm sorry. Don't say that. But it made me realize something. During all the pain and shame, there was one thing I was sure of. Shame. A single hope that I held on to. And that hope kept me alive. They violated Snake. her. Snake. I wanted to see you again. Meryl. 
That's my Kodak. Snake, it's me. Otacon, good news. Meryl's okay. All right. You saved her, man. Good job. I got some bad news, too. We're about to be bombed. Oh, boy. I guess we're considered expendable. Is there a way out of here? A way out? Uh, yeah. You can take the loading tunnel to the surface. There's a parking garage right next to you. The tunnel leads from there to the surface. The door in front? No. It's a small entrance to the west of that door. How about the security? I just unlocked it. Who do you think you're talking to? I'll take care of security along your escape route, too. What are you going to do? Me? I... I'll stay here. Are you crazy? I need a little more time to take care of your escape route. But... Unlocking the security doors is difficult work. Only I can do it. Otacon... Don't worry. I'm staying here. It's my own decision. Otacon, this is a hardened shelter, but they're going to use a surface-piercing nuclear bomb. It won't hold. I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know. Snake, I'm a complete person now. I've found a reason to live. Good. Don't die on me. Same to you. Take care of Meryl, okay? I will. Okay, I gotta go. I promise I'll do something about your escape route. Thanks. Thanks? Well, that sounds nice. I believe in you. Thanks, Snake. Let's get the hell out of here. What about him? Where's Otacon? <laughs> He's... Otacon. He's fighting right now. With his old self. To be the man he wants to be. He's fighting for us too? Yeah. And I don't want it to be in vain. Me too. So, there are two endings in this game. It, if you give in to Ocelot's torture, right? So obviously I didn't give in. Meryl's alive and Otacon's doing that thing. Meryl. If you give in, she dies. Right? And Otacon's here. Snake. No. It started. I must be heavy. Looks like we're not gonna have a love scene after all. Looks that way. Too bad. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Snake, it's freezing outside. You need some clothes. There's my sneaking suit. Hurry up. Hurry! Now where'd you get that at? Mm, looking good, Snake. Is, is Mantis back? Okay, Snake, let's go! 
Got it. Okay. Yeah, just a little shook up. Meryl, can you move? Uh, uh, it's no good. I can't move. What happened to Liquid? To Liquid. I can't see him either. <laughs> Liquid's dead. Uh-oh. Snake! If he's dead, that means... Don't say it, Snake. What happened to the air raid? No stealth bombers in sight. Snake, can you hear me? Colonel. Are you okay? Colonel, what happened? The Secretary of Defense has been arrested. Early retirement. Arrested? I was able to get into contact with the President. Metal Gear, the training exercise, all of it. It was all the Secretary of Defense acting alone. Acting alone? What happened to the air raid and the nuclear strike? The orders were rescinded. The F-117s and the B-2 Spirits have returned to the base. 
Once again, I have complete authority over this operation. I see. Washington isn't stupid enough to use nukes to cover up a few secrets. I wonder about that. In any case, the danger's over. Thanks, Snake. Colonel, you can rest easy. Merrill's fine. Really? Thanks. Thank you, Snake. Snake, I'm sorry. I, I kept a lot of things from you. It's okay, Colonel. Snake, I'm not a Colonel. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got a present for you. There's a snowmobile close to you. Mei Ling saw it on the satellite photos. This time of year, the glaciers are pretty calm. You should be able to ride right out of there. I'll bet the boys at the DIA and the NSA never expect you to come home alive. Me neither. I better not show my face around here. No danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. That's not too far from the truth. Also, there's a helicopter waiting for you on Fox Island. Dr. Hal Emmerich should be somewhere on the base. I want someone to bring him in. I understand. Leave it to me. Okay, Roy. Are you gonna be okay? Don't worry. I've got an insurance policy. A hard copy of all Mei Ling's data. As long as I've got that, you, me, and Mei Ling will be fine. The battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us. I guess we won't meet again. Don't worry. I'll pay you a visit sometime. Really? I look forward to that. Roy, just tell me one thing. What? About Fox Die. Meryl will be fine. She wasn't included in its programming. What about me? It killed Liquid. Naomi said that she wants to talk to you face to face about that. How is she? Don't worry. Mei Ling is with her right now. I'm switching over to Naomi. Snake, it's me. Naomi. I heard about my brother. I'm sorry. But he had one last message he wanted to say to you. He told me to tell you to forget about him and to go on with your own life. Frankie said that? Yeah. He also said he'll always love you. Naomi, your brother just saved you, me, and the whole world. He fought with every ounce of strength in his body. Maybe. Maybe now he's finally found some peace. He wasn't really my brother anymore. Ever since he fought with you in Zanzibar, he's been like a ghost. A ghost looking for a place to die. <laughs> Naomi, Liquid died from Fox Die too. What about me? When am I gonna go? That's up to you. What do you mean? Everybody dies when their time is up. Yeah, so when's mine up? It's up to you how you use the time left to you. Live, Snake. That's all I can say to you. Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code. It's unchangeable, immutable. But that's not all there is to life. I finally realized that. I told you before the reason that I was interested in genes and DNA. Because I wanted to know who I was. Where I came from. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was, who my parents were. And I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. Just like with the genome soldiers, you can input all the genetic information, but that doesn't make them into the strongest soldiers. The most we can say about DNA is that it governs a person's potential strengths, potential destiny. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate. 
to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. Snake, whether or not you're in the Fox Die program isn't important. The important thing is that you choose life. And then live. Don't you think, Snake? Don't worry. I'm going to choose life too. Until today, I've always looked for a reason to live. But from here on, I'm going to just live. Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. Living is a link to the future. That's how all life works. Loving each other, teaching each other. That's how we can change the world. I finally realized it. The true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. Look, I found this. Let's keep it as a reminder. Of what? A reminder of a successful mission? Or the first time we met? A reminder of how to live. Huh? Until today, I've lived only for myself. Survival has been the only thing I cared about in my life. That's not just you. That's how everyone is. I only felt truly alive when I was staring death in the face. I don't know. Maybe it's written into my genes. What about now? What do your genes say about your future now? Maybe it's time I live for someone else. Someone else? Yeah. Someone like you. Maybe that's the real way to live. So, where to, Snake? David. My name's David. Okay. So where to, Dave? Hmm. I think it's time we look for a new path in life. A new path? A new purpose. Will we find it? We'll find it. I know we'll find it. What are those? Caribou. To the Aleutians, the caribou is a symbol of life. It'll be spring here soon. For us too. Yeah. Spring brings new life to everything. It's a time for hope. I've lived here a long time. But Alaska has never looked more beautiful. The sky, the sea, the caribou, and most of all, you. I think I'm gonna like this new life. Come on, let's enjoy life. So that is Metal Gear Solid. Oh yeah, I I turned down the music because odds are it's. I mean, uh, when I stream Spider Man, video got blocked all the way around the world due to the music. Right when I put it up on YouTube, go on two days later, yeah, there's 
there's playthroughs everywhere. So I'm learning this whole thing, volumes, all that stuff. So one one less hassle, right? Even though for the Metal Gear game, for you know, for Metal Gear One and and all that crap, call that crap. Uh, I've got a hit on the last two ones that I got. The first one I, well, you know, uh, they they're both copyrights. They're not strikes. They're they're just saying we want to put ads on this, and I'm like, okay. I actually, you know, did file an objection for the first one or, or a dispute, and I won within like two days. But then I I got it after another one. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep getting these. I don't know if I want to keep doing it. But anyway, that was Metal Gear Solid, OG. Old school, 1998, Metal Gear Solid. And I, I think I played it in like 99 or something like that. It was about like almost a year later. But I, I remember distinctly the trailer. I remember the hype up for it. I remember my good buddy Rob. He had like, uh, ended up having like this uh, uh, this cheat book or uh, codes and secrets. With, uh, tips and tricks is what it was. And, and, and it was one of the special issues where all it had, it didn't have any reviews or, or, uh, or, or anything like that. All it had were tr- you know, a bunch of codes, codes for everything. And then it had some walkthroughs. And I remember it had the walkthrough for Metal Gear Solid, you know. And uh, Metal Gear Solid really became, like, yeah, just reading that, I'm like, oh, I want to play this game. And... I remember I was at a, I was at another friend's house and and he had it and I'm like man I really want to play this game and he's like go ahead and borrow it, so I took it home, and the game blew my mind. This game blew my mind when I played it. I had never played anything so cinematic. I had never played anything uh, with such of a narrative as this. And, you know, and and I I had just started getting into RPGs, FF Seven and, and the like, where you actually get like big long you know story driven games. And you know, I didn't play any of those, really, on the Super Nintendo. Uh, I kind of missed the, the RPGs of that era until later. But PlayStation is when I really started getting into more expensive games like this. And I I, I really look forward to going to the next one, to Metal Gear Solid 2. Because even though amongst the whole series, I really don't rate to that high in you know with the whole series. But my hype for two could not have been hi- higher. I was so hyped for that game. Coming off of this one, having, you know, on multiple levels, having had this game blow my mind with the all the twists and curves. But then, as I said before, you know, that player deception. Integrating the player, breaking that fourth wall, but then de- deceiving the player with, you know, the activation and the lies and everything. Uh, and then it kind of curves back all around and kind of has a happy ending at the end. Uh, I went to bed happy that night, and I'm going to go to bed happy tonight, too. Uh, and I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in. Uh, I want to thank Stax. He, you know, he tuned in live. Uh, I went ahead and, and I, went, I, f- I found his profile while we were here, and I followed him. And if you follow me on Twitch, I will more than likely follow you as well if I can. If I remember, sometimes uh, there might be a couple that I you know can't remember uh, if they have done so. But 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 if it's right here and and I can, I definitely will do it. And if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, subscribe here. There's going to be you know, more YouTube videos or more gaming videos as I do more Metal Gear games, other games. Uh, I'm, I want to do the Mass Effect series. Yeah, I, I've, I've got I've got Mass Effect series that I want to do. It's one of, it's one of my favorites along with. You know, the Metal Gear series, the Final Fantasy series, the Resident Evil series, uh, so many games. That I, you know, I have, I have a pretty massive collection. Nowhere near the biggest collection, uh, mind you. But I can't wait to get some more equipment. I want to get some uh, some AV to HDMI converters so that way I can open up my entire PS1 collection to streaming and I can just throw something up for, for a fun night or whatever, you know. Uh, I want to thank all everybody for watching all of my gameplay videos. Thank you so much. I want to thank for everybody who watches and listens to the podcast, the Game Addicts Podcast. It's a baby of mine. I've been, I've been nurturing that. And with my co-host, Mike, uh, we sit down and we talk about games every single week, live on Twitch on Wednesdays. Every single Thursday, the video and audio versions go up on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. So uh, thank you guys so much for you know doing all that. Anyway, we've got... 
something else to listen at here. Almost like an after credit scene, right? Turn this volume up. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. The important thing is that you choose life and then live. Yes, sir. The entire unit was wiped out. Those two are still alive. The Vector? Yes, sir. Fox dies should become activated soon. Right on schedule. Yes, sir. I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data. No, sir. My cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity. But he's been disposed of. Ooh. Yes, the inferior one was the winner after all. That's right. Until the very end, Liquid thought he was the inferior one. Yes, sir, I agree completely. It takes a well-bounced individual such as yourself to rule the world. No, sir. No one knows that you were the third one. Solidus, what should I do about the woman? Yes, sir. I'll keep her under surveillance. Yes, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. President. What did I get? Okay, so played on easy because I suck, and I had three continues. You guys should have seen me when I tried to start playing on normal. I got the Mantis. Destroyed me like 17 times. I couldn't beat Mantis. But look how many rations I used. <laughs> 37. Uh, was alerted 12 times. Ended up saving four and uh, killed almost 100 enemies. So code name Puma. And, of course, we got the bandana, which on a new game, if you follow this save into another new game, you get a limited ammo for that. And then if you uh, if you end up submitting to the torture uh, with Otacon, uh, so that way you get the Otacon ending, then you get the uh, his uh, stealth camo, which is another cool way, another way to go through. And then if you beat it that time, then, then if you go through the third time, Snake will be wearing a tuxedo, like, you know, the old school James Vaughn. But, uh, yeah. That whole ocelot scene at the very end, you know, here I am late at night when I was a kid having having first beat the game. Uh, and then, of course, it's going through the whole thing and you get it like that little after credit scene. And it's Naomi one more time kind of reiterating the message of, you know, live, you know. And, of course, that opens up the question, you know, uh, we find out with the ocelot thing that. Liquid was actually the inferior one, which means he had the more recessive genes. Does that mean that Fox Die uh, was augmented to do that? Did she know? Did she know? Like, if it didn't attack Solid, and if she's not saying that it will. Of course, we find out that it never really does. You know, did she put it on a random timer where it was just going to kill him eventually, or did like it target specifically the recessive genes? I like to think that it was targeted to specifically the recessive genes and that since she had after, you know, she was the one who had access to that kind of, you know, looking at, okay, uh, this is solids, this is liquids. They look the same, but if you look closely, you know, you could see how they were augmented and messed with and maybe she could uh, tailor Fox to that. They don't really say that. I like to think that that was the case because maybe at first she was like, you know, yeah, screw this guy. But then uh, when she started talking to him and learning who Solid Snake is, she kind of had a change of heart. Uh, but, man, okay, so Ocelot's alive. Of course, we, we go through that whole process. Uh, it does. This game does such a good job of keeping the pace going, and you don't even think about Ocelot when you get done. It's like, oh, it's done. Okay, yeah, great ending. And it's like, oh, crap, Ocelot's still alive. And then he's talking to somebody. And then he's like, okay, this, that, yeah. Fox die. Mm-hmm, okay. And then 
he starts talking about how, like, like the third one, Solidus. What the hell? And then he got the data, and it's like, okay, Ocelot was a double agent, or maybe he's a quadruple agent. I don't know. I mean, uh, the the they would expand that more, but that more than just the whole experience, that little tease at the end was like, I cannot wait for part two. Holy crap. What is this going to do? What does this mean? What are we going to learn? And unfortunately we get sheets, encyclopedias of more, of more questions than answers in Metal Gear Solid two. But my next stream will be Metal Gear Solid 2. Thank you guys so much for joining me live. If you did on on YouTube, if you're watching us there, please give us a subscribe. Help us grow here. Uh, check out the podcast. We talk about modern and retro video games, what's going on in the news. Sometimes we do uh, you know, focus stuff, retrospectives, certain things over there. We're on most, uh, pod, if not all, podcast services. Game Addicts Podcast. Just search your favorite uh, engine. Of course, go to GameAddictsPodcast.com. And then search our social medias. They're up there, in, uh, up there in the corner, uh, over there. Yeah, on the on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Game Addicts Play. We're there. We're active. Follow us, and uh, of course uh, on Twitch. Oh, go, you know, go follow us on Twitch at, at Game Addicts Play, and uh, we stream the podcast every single Wednesday. And then uh, of course gameplay videos when in, when I can. I have a schedule, but I don't always keep to that. But I try to keep uh, keep it updated on Twitch. Or on Twitch, I'm sorry, on Twitter and on Facebook when I can. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for checking out this stream. I'll see you on the next one. I've been Brando. Game on.